All right, everyone, thank you for tuning in to Shieldcox Happens, sponsored by Prospect Bomb and the Dustin Shieldcox Foundation. A lot of good stories, a lot of good news, so stay tuned, plug in, and enjoy. All right, welcome to the Shieldcox Happens podcast. With me always, Jameson Brown, and I'm Dustin Shieldcox. And today we have a, a great guest with us, Bruno Carnero. Thank you guys. How are hey, you? Thanks for coming in, man. It's, uh, you, you've got an amazing story. Um, and I know on our last podcast, we heard from Jameson <laughs> here. And it was, you know, it was great listening to you, too. And I'm, like I said, this is, I'm glad we're having this opportunity to speak and hear different stories. And Bruno, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, thank, first of all, thanks for having me in here. Uh, it's an honor. And uh, yeah, so I'm 17 years old. And um, I, been racing go-karts for 11 years and then I transitioned for these last two years into the formula cars and uh, just uh, you know ever since I was little it was my dream to to move up into the open wheel categories and that's what we've been doing lately so um, I've been living the dream and uh, um, you know just 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 racing is, is my life really okay so you're you're racing cars right now and how old are you uh, so I'm 17 and then and you're in high school correct yeah I'm a senior Senior in high school. Yeah. So how's how's the high school life going while you're racing cars? Obviously, it's a, it's a little tricky. Um, actually, this this last year, my senior year, we are doing a Utah Connection Academy, which is the online schooling, um, just to accommodate a little bit with the racing because I went overseas to China um, to race in the Formula Four uh, Formula Four Championship, in which we won. So um, you know, I use the online schooling to my advantage in that sense that I'm. On the planes, on the plane ride, I could use the Wi-Fi on Delta and uh, um, you know work on some schoolwork. And then also when I get back, I have a lot more time in the day instead of going to school. Or you know if I can accommodate it into my schedule throughout the day, or whatever I need to do during the day. Um, so yeah, it's it's a little tricky, but um, especially not having a real teacher, just having a, a computer right there in front of me. D but, could, could you imagine? Like I mean, most kids when they wake up in the morning, get ready for school. You know they're. They're trying to figure out what box of cereal to eat or, you know, what they're going to do at, you know, how much they hate one teacher or who they're going to talk to at school. And this guy's trying to figure out, you know, where am I going for my next race? You know, yeah. who's who, who's the next potential sponsor? You know, who who is who's my next rival? I mean, there's so many things. Well, putting racing aside, like you said, you're going – so you teach yourself online. And yes. if you're not going to school – so how does this fit in, like, when I went to high school, my thoughts were, you know, prom, going out partying, seeing my friends <laughs> at school. So if you're not, if you're not doing that, where's, uh, like, where do you fit in that level of yeah. your social life, I guess? Well, there's a lot I sacrifice, like you could say. Um, so I've gone to one dance in my school life, which is okay. I, I wasn't planning on Hold on, which one? Anyway. Which yeah. one did you go to? Homecoming. There you go. All right. At least it's, it's, you, at least it's one of the big ones. Yeah. Did you ask uh, the girl? Well, it, it was this year, so I was I was uh, I was not in a real school, and she kind of asked me, and then to do it more formally, I asked. So they're her, they're, they're coming out after you. See, there he goes, but he is living the race car <laughs> yeah. lifestyle. They're no, coming no. after him. He's no. not going after them. There you but go. But that was just an exception, just to see what it was like. So, but you know. Um, yeah, well, uh, there's some things I sacrifice, and I, I don't really hang out with anyone um, just because I, I don't have time to really, you know, spend proper time hanging out. Um, and sometimes I'd rather be, you know, working on my simulator, practicing, or going to work out or things like that just to benefit myself in racing and benefit, you know, evolve myself in racing. So there are some things that I have to leave aside in the social life that a lot of people notice as well. And asked me, oh, come on, it's just, you know, just to hang out today. And I said, I'm sorry. And I always say, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm really busy. Because um, there's always something going on. And um, there's always something you can do to kind of progress yourself and evolve yourself. So. See, that's impressive. I mean, that's, you don't hear, you know, high schoolers right now talking about staying to a passion, hooking to the passion, and trying to accelerate to become one of the best. I mean, that's, that's impressive. Thank you. That's impressive. Well, yeah. So, like, what does a day what does a day consist of? I mean, because if most people get up, they go to school. If they're sports, they do practice and then go home. And then they're on the weekends, they're hanging out with friends and partying or right. whatever they do. I didn't get to do anything besides party, so I don't know what the successful people did. No, no. But 
Um, so like what's your day from top, like beginning to end? Yeah, I've, I've been working on waking up a little bit earlier, but I usually get up at about like 8, 8.30. Um, and then from there, just nice healthy breakfast. I've been working on my nutrition a lot because that's, I, I love food, so I, I eat too much. But, um, um, you know, although it's, not, although it's not believed by some people, motorsports is a very physical and demanding sport. So nutrition and physical exercising is very important. So, um, you know, wake up with a good with a good breakfast, and then if if I have time right off the morning, I can do some schoolwork, um, and then also you know, especially in the off season, working for for sponsors and making proposals and things like that, um, and then we can go exercise. So either if it's a, if it's a day at the gym or you know riding on the bike indoors or outdoors if the weather's nice, um, and. From then we can come back home and you know finish up the school because um, you can divide it into the day, and so then you can finish a little bit of school, and all, all throughout the day you know you're working working for sponsors and thinking what you can do, and then at night starting at six thirty um, it's a little harder now that I'm older because um, I'm not the cute little kid anymore but I go fundraising door to door, and uh, I sell twenty five dollar gift certificates through DZO Grill, and which is my main sponsor and then you know. All the money I raise, I get to put back into my into my racing, and I can buy tires, fuel, um, all things like that. So um, it can get a little busy during the day um, w when you're fitting everything into it, um, but it's it's just part of it. So it's, it's a good so sacrifice. We've talked a lot about just kind of some of the the setbacks that didn't quite define us. You know, we were able to adapt in life and and, and progress as we you know walked this journey of life. You know, what's, what are some of the setbacks that fuel you? What are, what are some of the things that you wake up and you're like, you know what, man, I'm not going to let that beat me or I'm not going to let this guy beat me or I'm not going to let that thing hold me back from becoming, you know, what I want to become and, and living out my dream. What are, what are some of those things that you go through? Um, it could be daily, it could be monthly. You know, what are, the, what are the things that fuel you, so to speak? Right. Um, there's some times where I just, I can get lazy and I don't want to go to the gym or I don't want to go fundraise at night. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's even seeing competition, um, posting about, oh, I'm doing this today to, you know, if they're working out or if they're um, whatever it may be just to, to help themselves. That kind of motivates myself. That motivates me like, oh, I need, I, you know, I need, to, I need to work harder because there's somebody working harder than me almost. Um, and, you know, there's, there's times when I don't want to, but then I tell myself I have to, so then I just go. Um, and, you know, even with the fundraising, there's many times I don't want to go, especially now that I'm older. And it may be too cold or maybe windy or something, but there's, there's times I really do not want to go. Like last night, for example, I did not want to go. Um, and, you know, instead I went to the gym. So there's, there's some times that I set myself back, but most, most times I just uh, think about what I'm missing out on and how I could progress myself if I go and commit this task that I need to do. And then that just kind of motivates me. So that's what sometimes I can set myself back, but I know I, that I need to motivate myself to to go and do it. So cool, cool, cool. What about like setbacks? I was thinking like so. Sorry. Well, I mean, as you're going through this, like you said, you the times you don't want to get up because you're you know tired and lazy. But when you get to those parts, like, do you ever hit that wall where like maybe this is not the career, this is not a pathway you want to take, oh, or yeah. you want to you want to? Yeah. Uh, it, there's been some times where it's crossed my mind, um, you know, when t 2015 sometimes, um, but 2016 was such a good year that um, I didn't have, you know, tough times. But especially in the soft season now, we're really struggling to find the funds for the, for the next step, um, which I, I can't, I'm not allowed to announce yet because nothing's confirmed. Right, right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there's multiple times where you just kind of want to give up because um, it's, a, you know, it's a lot of work and you're like, oh, I don't have to go through this if I, if I stop racing. But... Um, honestly, um, even though those thoughts cross my mind like it does for most people, um, to me, I'm nobody without racing. So I know that if I don't have racing, that, I, that I'm nobody and that I won't be able to smile as much as I do or be as happy as I am. So, um, yeah, there's, there's multiple times, or there's sometimes not as much as before, but um, when I just want to quit. Um, because I think it's not possible, but um, you need to keep fighting, and I have multi you know I have a big team behind me that's fighting as well to make it happen, and um, you know together we can make it happen. So it it gets tricky sometimes, but you know you just gotta gotta 
push through. And so how many races have you won? Let's say, let's say 2016. How many races did you win in 16? So in 2016, um, I competed in the Formula Car Challenge on the West Coast here in the U.S. and then also in the Formula 4 Chinese Championship. And uh, in, in China, we won eight races and got 14 podiums out of the 15 events. And then in the, in the U.S., we won five races out of, I think we competed in eight rounds. So we won, we won quite a few as well. Um, so it was a good year overall. So diving into that, um, is it harder to get sponsors with that type of credentials or do they still want more? Do they still want to see you do more? They still want more proof. I mean, how did, how, it, how is it difficult to get a sponsor and, and what things help loosen that up? I mean, that's right. Um, well, obviously, you know, being able to win helps a lot. And if I, for example, the sponsor that I, I had last year want to c continue on to this year because they've seen the, the success and then also the success that's benefited them, them and their business. Mm. Um, the struggle sometimes can be, um, you know, finding a, a local company and if, if, they're, if they have enough in them or if the company itself has enough to sponsor and then on the other side of, you know, finding a big company, if they have enough to look on a little guy like me um, because I'm not on a big scene yet. Um, and we're slowly growing. So as soon as, you know, the more I grow, the more big companies would like, it would have more interest. So it's a little bit tricky finding, um, you know, the right, the right mix. And I've had a lot of luck, obviously, Rodizio Grill from the start, um, Kimber Cable, uh, Shark Savers, which is like organization. So there's a lot of personal people, um, even Alan Wilson and Desiree Wilson, who designed the track out at, uh, out in Twila. Um, and, you know, there's, I could go on, there's multiple multiple sponsors that really helped and they you know with the successes we had last year they want to continue on to next year and um, that helps as well and also just being on a bigger stage um, every time you move up also attracts more people so um, it's a little it can be a little bit tough at first finding somebody but once they're on board and the success continues and you know they want to stay on board and we grow together as partners pretty much so, so as, as you've kept like you know winning and you're getting on these bigger stages, who are the most famous people you've met with these, like, in your, who do you think? Right, well, uh, actually, because I won the Formula 4 championship, I got to go to Austria for the FIA awards. Um, the series I competed in was sanctioned by FIA, and FIA is, they are the sanctioning body for Formula 1, uh, World Rally Cross, so, like, the big, big, big leagues of, of racing, and I was fortunate enough to be invited to, to one of the most prestigious events and award ceremonies. Um, and there I received my, my beautiful FIA trophy for, for, winning, the for winning the championship. Um, and probably the most, probably the few of the coolest guys I've, I've met, and, and women as well. Um, but I, I met Lewis Hamilton, who's one of my idols, and uh, uh, Bernie Eccleston, who's the, pretty much Mr. Formula One himself. Um, you know, John Todd, Total Wolf, Patty Wolf, or Total Wolf, uh, Patty Lowe. Um, so all these super important people on Mercedes who won the, the Constructors' Championship um, and Nico Rosberg who won the, champion, the World Constructors' Championship um, this last year. So, yeah, just like that was, that was an event where I met a lot of my heroes and uh, it, was, it was pretty cool just to, to be in the same room as them. And even Max Verstappen, who I'm a little jealous of because, um, you know, he, he won a race at 18, so he took that. He won a Formula One race at 18, so he took that privilege away from me. But uh, yeah. um, so I can't be the youngest kid to win a Formula One race. But um, you know that's in the future, hopefully. But um, yeah, so just just that, that event in general, I met so many people in that one night that it was it was quite magical. For Do you ever me. just come out of that event just yoked, like you're just ready to take on the track? Like I mean, you know, it, I know it's an end of year kind of gala thing, but yeah. I mean, how quick are you ready to just jump back on the track after you come from something like that? I'm always ready to, like right now I want to go drive, you know, so, um, yeah, but it, you know, it's going to be tough because there's, the next step um, is, a, is a big step, and then also to, to compete in another FIA sanctioned award, um, it's a lot of money as well. Right, right. Because um, in, in, technically Formula 4, the next step would be Formula 3, and the only Formula 3 sanctioned, or Formula 3 series sanctioned by FIA is the European Formula 3, and that's close to like a million euros. So that's you know 1.3 million dollars, um, which is you know insane. But there's there's a, the I don't want to say lower divisions, but it's just the the minority f groups, and that's kind of what we're targeting because it's a little bit more of a low budget, 
and then almost from there we can kind of go into Europe. So, you know, I don't I don't know if I'll be able to to be at another gala like that for a little while, and I I hope I can be again because um, it was a magical night. But yeah, after after leaving there, I wanted to drive again just to try to experience what I just you know earned almost. So, what fears do you experience? I mean, I guess that's you know, there's there's always that that f- my fear is that uh, you know what happened with me you know four or five years ago could replicate itself and you know the the if that did happen it would cost the lives of a few other people along with my own you know th- these are fears that kind of keep me on my path and Dustin has a few of his fears but what 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 fears do you have that you overcome the moment that you slide that visor down and and you start the car up. I mean, what what do you shut out? Uh, probably me not being able to race is my biggest fear. Or, you know, if, if something happens that I'm not able to race um, financially or something happens to me in an accident or something um, on track. But, you know, as soon as I close, as soon as I close the visor, or like you said, I don't, I don't feel anything at all. Um, emotion, I feel a lot of. Uh, I get very emotional in the car, and that can be good, but sometimes it's too much. Um, so, you know, and, working on containing that and uh, but you know yeah just the biggest fear is probably th- that I won't be able to be behind the wheel doing what I love um, but when I am behind the wheel doing what I love I kind of don't think about anything else other than driving and doing what I need to do and for example I I you know even if I have pain in my back or something or if something is going on um, it, it all leaves and then after the race it comes back so you know when, I, when I'm doing what I what I love I don't think any. I don't think about anything else other than what I'm doing. So, yeah, you know, just everything leaves. Yeah, and as far as your physical, your body, because I actually had the opportunity to ride with Bruno in the car, and like you were saying earlier, we were racing those that track out in Twilla, right. and you were taking those corners at 100 miles an hour plus on those corners, and the straightaways were I don't know what the top speed was, but I know I did three laps with you, and when I got out, my neck hurt, uh, I felt sick. And that was three laps just with that. So I can't imagine. What's a typical race? Like when you do a race, how many laps is that? Um, it depends. Sometimes it goes off of time, actually. Um, so it can be up to, right now I have more of a sprint race set up. So it's usually 30 minutes for, for, for an event. And uh, depending where you are, it can be really hot, really humid, and that can kind of alter, you know, yourself. Um, so yeah, when, when I got to take out around Utah Motorsports Campus, um, which I had a blast too, I got to spend the whole day driving a Radical. It's like a, it's like a smaller prototype looking car. Yeah. Um, and luckily there was a passenger seat, so it was good to take you. Dude, it was, I mean, it was fun. Like I said, I don't want to do it again. Like, <laughs> obviously I'm paralyzed, and I'm, I'm, I'm flipping and a flopping in this car. Like. Yeah. And I, like so, I said when I got out, I'm, I mean, I couldn't imagine, and he sat there and he just did laps all day. Yeah. And I was like, nah, that would make me sick. I mean, but it's, it was crazy the the force that when you take those corners. I mean. You literally couldn't pull yourself off the side, and then you're strapped in this harness. You take one corner, and the next thing you know, we're whipping the other way, and it's like just ripping you back and forth. So I can't imagine exactly the the pressure that puts on your body when you sit there and do those laps continuously. Yeah, I mean, because I, I drive a, an open wheel car, which even has more downforce than you know. It has I don't know about the route. It would have similar to maybe more downforce. It, it weighs less than than what we drove. So the open wheel cars and the high downforce cars like like prototypes that we drove, um, those are really physically demanding because they have less horsepower, um, typically unless you start getting up into the to the bigger leagues. But um, for example, my Pro Mazda that I race here in the U.S. Um, has 270 horsepower, but it only weighs 1,300 pounds. So the power to weight ratio is insane, mm-hmm. and we may be getting up to like 140, 150 miles an hour down the straightaway. But um, through the corners, you know, you can be hitting 110. 110. Um, the max I've done mid-corner was at UMC um, or Utah Motorsports Campus, but that was 123 miles an hour going up the hill. So you know, you, you get you get you go fast down the straightaway, but it's through the corners, especially in an open wheel car, that you really feel the aero aero uh, load on the on the car and that's where you really need to be fit you know to be able to hold your neck in place and be able to hold your body in place you have the seat belts that are really cinched tight and that helps but other than that your head's out in the wind because there's no it's an open cockpit so your head's out in the wind and you're just you know holding on to yourself so it's pretty it's pretty fun so as as a little mini bruno 
at the age of, let's say, five years old or four years old, you know, those parents that have kids that, you know, either are your age right now or or are, you know, talking about basketball and football and baseball. What made you want to race? And then, uh, you know, in regards to your support team, like, you know, how quickly were they, you know, supporting you? Was there backlash? Was there like, right. no, my baby Bruno cannot be in a car. Yeah. I'm not going to be okay with that. I mean, because, like, you know, you have parents who are talking about football and the parents go, no concussions. And you got parents who are talking about basketball. No, you're too short. And then baseball, it's like, no, I don't want a 95 mile per hour fastball at your forehead. Like there, there, are, there are things that people talk about. But then you talk about racing mm-hmm. as a parent. And you said you go-kart race it. Raced for 13 years, right? Uh, it was 11. I've 11, been racing 11 for 13. Years. So yes, racing right. for 13, but go-kart's 11. Yeah. So you've been racing since you were six, right? Uh, actually, I started when I was four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah. Okay, so you got mini Bruno in a go-kart at four and a half. What, you know, what did, what was your support team like? What, what made you want right. to do it in the first place, you know? Um, well, you know, the, the cool thing about going to the, back to the FIA gala, um, was because I met Formula One stars, and how everything started was me watching Formula One races. And it, it's still my dream, is to compete in a Formula One race and be a Formula One driver. So just watching races with my dad and uncle and you know grandpa, the whole family, um, it just really excited me how fast they were going and how late they were breaking to the corners and um, you know top speeds and all the, all the stuff just fascinated me. And how everything started actually was I would always play with matchbox cars, so like little Hot Wheels, and I would, Always, I, like to this day sometimes, I still... Do you still play with them? Um, not as much, no. Okay. But, I, but he still plays with yeah. them, but he still plays with them. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes. So not nearly as much. Yeah, we've, uh, you know, playing with Matchbox cars, and um, the funny story is uh, I, uh, Ivan, Ivan Utrera, who is the founder of Rodizio Grill, um, had my dad working for him, and I would have to go to, to meetings with him, and I, I didn't have school at that time, so... Um, I would go to the meetings and I would actually get the salt and pepper shakers off the table and I'd get like six of them and make it team, so team pepper, team salt. And then I'd just make a track around the, around the, the tables at Rodizio and i just and Ivan would look over and wow, he really likes racing, doesn't he? And he called my dad one day and he's like, I'm buying Bruno a go-kart. And my dad's like, what? Why? <laughs> because I can tell he has a passion for it and I see something in it. So he bought me my first go-kart. And then, you know, I, I found, uh, my dad found the video like a month ago, the first time I went out and I got all emotional too because... Have you posted uh, that video? Um, I haven't posted, I, well... That'd be a great video to watch. There is, a, there is a video on YouTube that actually shows side-by-side comparison of me going down the front straightaway in, in the go-kart, which is now the back straightaway of the, of the racetrack and w- that we went on. And you can see me in my formula car at, and it stops at the same moment of when I'm passing in my go-kart and when I'm passing in the formula car. That's sweet. So it's, and then I can send you the link if you want, but it's, um, it's pretty cool just to see the transition. But um, yeah, it was super small and started going and um, I, I, I can't remember. I just know that as soon as I, I started driving, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And you know, after the, after the third practice session, we were already like competitive in, in the karting kid kart times. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, we went on to race in the next season when I turned, uh, when I was still four and a half and I then turned five that, that season. Um, and we won like, we won the championship straight away. So you know, off to a good start. And then from there, we just continued to grow. And as far as how the family reacted to it, everybody loved it because my whole family enjoys racing. Um, I think uh, my my mom was a little bit uh, about it, but she 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 was okay. Um, later on, she had more issues when I started going faster. But um, <laughs> but um, no, I mean everybody's okay with it really, and they know that I'm safe and um, in a way I know what I'm doing. But um, you know, just just to know the limits and everything. So yeah, I've I've been lucky and blessed to not not have had any serious accidents to this day and. I've never, from what I recall, from what I can recall, I've never flipped before in a, in a car on a go kart. So I've been very lucky on that aspect. So, you know, there's there's not much to worry about. It's it's a very safe sport to say the least. Um, in the go kart, you have no seat belts because you know if you if you flip, you want to jump out and not have the cart smash you. But in the cars, you have seat belts, which you know, 
just not not only the seat belts, but there's the Hans device which holds your head in place, right. and if you, you you know you can't get whiplash or anything like that, and you can't break your neck, so you know just the safety requirements also is you know my my dad for example looks at that and he's okay with it because there's so much safety involved, and the last death in Formula One was you know sadly in 2014, but before that was only 1994, so you know everything's evolving in, in safety wise and everything, so it's. You know, it doesn't seem too bad to the parent, and especially if if it's you know a nice, cautious. Um, and everybody in in like in the karting community, if they come with a broken arm, oh, what happened? Baseball. Oh, what happened? Basketball. Football. You know, so it's never racing that that got them injured. It was the other sports. So, um, yeah, there's nothing that the parents need to worry about. Initially, it's a little bit of a shock because oh, my baby, you know, but. After that, yeah, it's, my baby's it's going one hundred and ten around a corner. Like that's, yeah, I, I, <laughs> you know I'm scared riding with him. I'm not <laughs> a baby anymore. You know? What about what's your family think, or like what do you think, um, or have you been in a race yet and actually had you know what they, they call it the caution when someone else wrecks? I mean, like, yeah. have you seen something like that? Where have you do you have any like thoughts go through your head when you see something like dramatic happen to someone else? Um, yes. Um, sometimes you, you know you the first thing is oh I hope he's okay and I hope it's not too serious, but. Um, you almost, you know, as you pass by, you kind of focus back into your race and you're like, oh, he's fine, don't worry, he's going to be fine. Um, and then you're just in, in your zone, kind of. So, you know, obviously there's that first shock, like, ooh, that was, that was a big impact, I hope he's okay. But, you know, you, you say to yourself, he's, he's fine, he's fine. And then, you know, you can look out your mirror or something, or look out and you can see that he's up and out of the air. And whenever, whenever, any, whenever anybody stands out of a car after a crash, that's, you know, that's a good sight. So kind of tell yourself and you know it's okay um, and he's fine and then you you know just reassure yourself afterwards when you when you see that he is actually okay so there's some of this I've almost picked up that uh, you know this sport is almost as demanding on the mental side oh, yeah. as it is on the physical side I mean yes. you got to take into account that you are blocking out thoughts left and right oh throughout a race that... yeah it's really mental it really gets into your head N you know not only not only yourself not only the sport but the competitors around you um you know i i, I would play games and I'd, before the before the green flag on the grid i'd go up to every driver and shake their hands you know so i'm, I'm the nice guy you know watch out for me and then when i get on the track i, I would not be your friend anymore so you kind of, you kind of, you kind of like get that. into their Dude, head. Dude, this game on at that point. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and I mean, that's that's how karting was a lot as well. You know, just um, and, and you almost did it to say like, so if the if I was behind the kid or if he was going to pass me, the kid would think, oh, he's nice to me, so I'm not going to take him out. You know, because it happens a lot. So it's very much a mental game um, from the competitors. Also, if you have somebody in the crowd that's boo boo boo, you know, you, you got to block that out. And yeah, that's what you, they actually boo you? I, I haven't had that happen before, but I've had like, per, like personal competitors that are very against me. And, you know, that can get into your head, but you kind of have to block that out. And if you don't, then the only thing you're thinking about that entire race is, oh, he's, he's behind me, he's going to take me out. And then next thing you know, you make a mistake and he's in front of you. So, you know, you just got to you know, keep, keep the bad thoughts out. And it's very much a mental game in the car. If somebody passes you like you don't like it, it's okay, it's okay. Don't don't overreact to it. Get back and pass them back. So, you know. So as you compete right now, do you have a competitor like that? You know that when you go to that race, you know there's that guy that you and him are going to butt heads every time it's like well, that? Well, actually, funny enough, in China, the kid who finished second in the championship, his dad and, and himself, every race protested me saying that I was cheating because they, they thought I was getting too much power out of the corner or they thought I was um, passing too fast in the straightaway. And then when they go to look, it was that I had, you know, you can adjust the wing angles. So I had less wing angle, which means I would go faster in the straightaway, but it would compensate me in the corners. And then for the, for the times that they would protest me that I was exiting the corner too quick, they'd look at the data and it would show that he's, we're braking at the same point, but he stays on the brake too long and then gets on the gas, and instead I brake, you know, coast to kind of get the car rotated, and then I'm back on the power much sooner, which explains why I'm, you know, pulling out. And the, skill. Yeah. Well, not skill, but. You know. Oh come on, man! Just yeah, say, just it's, it's, There's a reason you're I'm first. A, it's just I'm, why I'm what I learned. Ass, so that's it. It's what I've learned, you know. Uh, not skill. I'm just. So do you ever get starstruck? Like, do you ever, do you ever realize that, you know, you've got fans now? You, yeah. 
it's no longer a click thing. Like, you know, you go through high school, it's like, how many friends do I have? You know, how many, how many of the football players like me? How many of the cheerleaders are down with me? Like, who? oh, yeah, I can go to this part and there's 300 people. Like, do you get starstruck at the fact that, like, anywhere that someone could say, Bruno, I want your autograph? It's, it's really cool, especially in China. I mean, I, I, it's hard to imagine, but it's a Formula 4 race, which is three steps below Formula 1. And when we went to race in Shanghai, um, which is the Formula One track itself, we had 20,000 20, people in the stands watching. And, you know, just like look up, oh my gosh, look at all these people. Um, it's, it's insane. Um, Did you sign some autographs? Uh, yeah, they have. Uh, the really cool thing about the series is they have these, this meet and greet session with the, with mm -hmm. the fans. And you can, you, you know, the fans can come up and you sign, you sign posters, you sign if they bring something they want to sign for you. So you've signed hats. Um, one of the coolest things was I had a lady who looked at me in line, got out a piece of paper, drew, drew a picture of me, and then gave it to me as she came into line with me. So it took her f five to seven minutes, and she drew this picture that, wow, that, that's me, you know, it looks like me, and number one on the side. So um, just honored and humbled is probably the biggest thing I feel when I, when I see this. And all these kids wanted to take pictures with me, and um, it's just, it's pretty, pretty cool and it's something I won't forget so I couldn't imagine that I mean I think for myself personally going I mean I'd be too gloating with that I mean oh, yeah. that's just a, I think that is so awesome that you're you know having a fan base like that 20,000 people and you're down there signing autographs and you know and then especially when you're number one I mean yeah. that just trumps it all well, I, think yeah, the th right. I think the thing that's really cool is that you know in a, in, in a society that we talk about you know you always hear about how millennials are they're lazy or they, 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 they are entitled or they, they expect too much. They don't do enough. And all of a sudden you're talking to, to, to Bruno and you're sitting there going, this kid wakes up, he works his ass off. He's still humble as humble could be. And, and he's, he's got a goal set. I mean, it's, it's, it's refreshing. In a way, I, I feel like I need to be humble, obviously because that's the right thing to... You well, never, it could go away, you know, right. I mean, like that, just like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and you don't, you don't want to be somebody that's with their nose up and you know you see that in a driver like oh, why I feel no reason to be to be you know with my nose up because right. if it wasn't for them I would not be where I am today and you know family my parent my, my dad in particular and uh, Ivan you know it's those people that really you know not that I would want to be with my nose up but I know that without them I would never be where I am today so um, yeah it's 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 an essential just to, to be humble. So tell people who will be listening to this where to find you, how to you know, help support your team, support you, how to, uh, you know, how to find information on Bruno. Uh, probably my website is, is the nicest. Um, so it's Bruno Carnero Motorsports. Um, and my last name is C-A-R-N-E-I-R-O. Um, and you know there I have information to get in contact with me and everything. And also for um, local businesses, we're looking to to get more partnership for this year especially. So please go yeah. on there and contact me and I'd love to get in touch with you and get a proposal out. And then also Facebook is a, it's a big one that I use. So that's just Bruno Carnero is my, uh, my personal page, uh, profile. And then my, my actual page is Bruno Carnero Motorsports. Um, Instagram is Bruno uh, Carnero 21 and Twitter is Bruno Racing 21. So, cool. so I stick to that. Well, Bruno, thanks for, uh, for coming in and talking to us. Thank you to all the listeners that are listening to us. We we appreciate it. I mean, it's the the first one was a lot of fun. This this next one has been a riot, and you know each one's gonna get uh, more and more entertaining. And for the, uh, any listener out there, if there's a a story you want to come tell us, whether it be a, a successful story of what you're going through, uh, hard times, please just give us a personal message on Facebook, and we would love to bring you in here and, and hear what you're going through. Yep, and stay tuned for our next podcast. Um, like we said, we're gonna we're gonna continue to roll these out with with more guests and and more stories and and just to to second what Dustin said, pri private message us on Facebook if you if you definitely want a story out there. We we want to hear it. We know that there's probably more people out there that love to hear it. So thanks for tuning in and uh, and look forward to uh, hearing from you again. Thanks. All right, everyone. Thank you again for listening to our podcast. If you would like to be on our podcast and have a story that, uh, that you want to get out there, visit us at www.dustinshieldcox.com or private message us on Facebook, and we'd love to have you on the show.